meant to be a placement of confidence, but the sound that it produced was more like wah, 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 wah. I come to you today with a harebrained scheme. Is this a good idea? No. Are we going to have fun with this idea? Probably. I mean, you are. Because is this idea all your fault? Yes. Let the torture recommence. It's Leanne. Believe it or not, I can't believe that I'm saying this. Let alone on camera where it can be recorded and people can see it. I miss pecking TBR. I miss pecking TBR. I miss pecking TBR. Editing Leanne here. This video was filmed at the start of December, but I was so incredibly overwhelmed by all of your amazing Christmas orders in my store that it just never got edited and posted. But I found the footage today and it is so much fun and I didn't want to just bin it. So consider this video to be kind of an aberration in my timeline. Don't try and worry too much about where it should have fit in and just enjoy it for the chaos that it is. Because I'm not going to be doing TBRs until the end of the year, I'm just going to let myself mood read because I have so many other things that I am doing. I decided that we would come up with a harebrained way to give you guys some recommendations that would give you kind of the same feel as a picking your TBR video. So the way I decided that we would be picking random recommendations for this video would be using Pantone colours. This is my 100 Pantone postcards box. This is non-spawn in any way. There are many Pantone colours in the world, many of them, and I am an indecisive human. And so I decided, because right now as I'm filming this, I am doing productivity sprints with my patrons, I decided to ask them to pick the colours for me to give it the authentic feel of a TBR picking video, you know, with the pressure and the pain. So, uh, so here they are. Here are the recommendations. I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna regret it. Thank you all for your contributions to my experiment. There we go. Yes, of course you can pick several. <laughs> Thank you to all of those humans who contributed. Thank you. Oh. So much, so much. Because I am not completely masochistic, I am going to use a Pantone swatch gallery website to look up each of these colours instead of trying to find the codes in my box. Because I think, I think I would drive myself madder than I already am. So let's look at the first one that we have. The first one is from Chris and she picked 655. So, oh, okay. 655 is a really really dark dark navy blue what do i have on my shelves that can accommodate that color all right so the closest that i've got to that color on my shelves is the galaxy and the ground within by becky chambers which is the third book in the wayfarers series is in the wayfarers series that i love enough that i called my snake wayfarer so that's a lot it is impossible to completely give you a recommendation for this book but i will give you a recommendation for the whole series i always say that the wayfarers series is for you if you have always liked the idea of sci-fi but you're not very into sci-fi plots. If you don't really want any science, you don't really want any kind of real mechanics behind the universe, you just want characters who exist in space and a story about those characters, this is the series for you. It is also the series if you are looking for the tippy toppy mwah, piece de resistance of diversity in your sci-fi books because Becky Chambers literally does it all. This series starts out aboard the Wayfarer which is a tunnelling ship. It punches holes through space to make corridors to make people move faster from one place to another. But deep space vessels don't have a lot of contact with the outside world and that is exactly what Rosemary really wants when she posts herself across the galaxy 
to be essentially an administrative assistant for this group of very strange individuals who coexist on this tiny tiny rickety ship. She wants absolutely nobody from her real life, from her past existence to know who she is. I have to admit I, I see the merit in that. I see the merit in posting yourself across space anonymously. I'm kind of here for the vibes. When she gets there, what she thinks is just going to be an anonymous new start actually turns out to be the kind of found family that she didn't know that she needed. Becky Chambers doesn't just do space stories, she does human stories and she does it with a cast of characters from all different races. There are artificial intelligences in there. Not every alien is humanoid in form, which thank you, can we just get away from that please? This book is actually the last in the series. It is complete. There will be no more, but that also gives you the satisfaction of starting a series that you know you don't have to like race to keep up with, if you know what I mean. Okay, let's see what joy awaits us with the next colour. So Erin wants three, two, five. Oh, okay, it's a kind of tealy blue, a kind of sea blue. We're going very much with the blues at the start of this video. What do I have? I'm immediately drawn to my non-fiction shelf because for some reason, there are more weird tealy blue colours on that than there are anywhere else, including in my sci-fi books. So you market and people are doing something wrong, that's all I'm saying. Let's go for something a little bit unexpected, shall we? So the book that I have picked for Pantone 325 is The Adventures of Maud West Lady Detective by Susanna Stapleton. Essentially, if you like Poirot, if you like Miss Marple, if you like any kind of golden age crime, you need to be reading this book. Maud West was literally the first female private detective that existed in London. She opened her storefront in 1905 and she started taking on cases from all sorts of walks of life, but many, many of them from the upper echelons of London society. Susanna Stapleton takes Maud's own case books and weaves them in between her investigation of who Maud was as a person, and it is a riotous, rip-roaring ride. That was a tongue twister that I am proud of. Each of the chapters in this are split up into a different case that Maud investigated, and a lot of them have direct extracts from London newspapers or pictures of the characters from the time. And when I say characters, I mean cheating men. And honestly, like, who else can claim that they ever had anything in a newspaper that says Slater's women detective? Many men say women have been their downfall, but Henry Slater owes his success to lady detectives. And if you needed any more convincing about why you should read it, is this sentence, this quote from Maud West, not the most Miss Marple vibes you have ever had? <clears throat> to know how to watch, to know how to wait, these are the cornerstones of our work. She's my hero, you should read this, that is all, thank you, goodbye. Okay, let us see what is next. Lauren has given us 189, which, it, ooh, is a kind of blushy pink. Ugh, okay, so I can immediately think of only two books on my shelf which have that colour on the cover, nay, three books which have that colour on the cover, none of which I have read. So one of which is My Dark Vanessa, which I am... Um, it's still on my intimidating books list, guys, and that is mostly because of the hype, let's be honest. The next one that I can think has this blush pink is Detransition Baby, which I have just recently picked up. I haven't got to it yet, but it's 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 close. It's, it's near to the top of the mood reading, pile but I think this one is going to be super hard hitting so I think I also need to keep it for a time where my brain is okay with it and then the last one is how to kill your family I think is the title and it is a story about a girl who I believe at the start is behind bars and she blatantly tells you that she regrets nothing and that she's there because she killed her entire family and this is the story of how she plots to do that. Now, Jean recently read it 
for a vlog of hers and we bought it around about the same time and she hated it but that just kind of gives me more motivation to try it out so maybe I will use this Lauren's colour here as a prompt to pick up one of these books finally. <laughs> okay so Larissa asked for 260 and 260 ooh, is a perfectly beautiful eggplant purple. Harry would love it. It is close to Harry's favourite colour of purple in the world. What do I have on my shelves that is eggplant? Ah, I see it. The book that I have picked for this one is almost a perfect colour match. I don't think I could have done better if I had tried and that is Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Bally Court Jaswal. This is essentially feminism, murder, older characters conquering the world and all set in the Punjabi community. Essentially if you have read The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Oseman recently which has of course massively taken off and has done the rounds and features some characters in a nursing home very much conquering the world and solving murders then this is a great place to go afterwards because this is about Nikki. She has spent her entire life trying to get away from the confines of the really strict upbringing she had in her community but circumstances have forced her back and she takes a job teaching at a local temple. There she gets access to older women in her community who eventually realise that this is a safe place for them to talk about their experiences. So there are some dark bits in this book because we do look at what has happened to some of these women physically and sexually before in their lives but there's also a lot of humour in it because Nikki suddenly realises what's been going on behind the scenes of this really strict upbringing her entire life and then in amongst everything a suspicious disappearance of a young girl happens and Nikki finds herself right in the middle of a murder mystery and her only allies are the older women that she has been teaching, all of whom have opinions. And it's a very, very unusual murder mystery. I have said hundreds of times before on this channel that all I want, all I want is for older characters to have equal representation. People from their mid 50s onwards to actually be whole characters represented with like wants and needs as if, you know, we don't stop when we get to 35 and this book definitely serves on that so if that's your kind of thing read it and if it's not your kind of thing read it anyway because you freaking like it okay okay so i will admit i had to do a little bit of searching through the colors for a new color because we had quite similar color families in there but i eventually got to emma louise reed's suggestion of three, four, six, which is this kind of sea green. So I feel like that is, I'm going to accept this as green, it's a new colour family. And I immediately thought of a book. I immediately went and snatched it off my, sh I didn't even film it. I just went and snatched it off my shelves because I was that determined that I was going to talk about it. I haven't mentioned this book in a really long time and I really, really love it. So the book that I am going to recommend for this one is one that if you've been around my channel for a long time, you're going to probably recognise. If you're new, you will never have seen before. And it is Love Nina by Nina Stibby. This is a memoir from Nina who in 1982 when there were no such things as childcare qualifications really, Nina decided that she wanted to get out of her very small town and move to London and a perfect way to do that would be to become a nanny. She ended up becoming a nanny for a family that was quite unexpected. They are a theatre family, a very upper crust family in a very expensive part of London and she, <laughs> she meets some strange characters through that family, some visitors to that house who are very famous but very odd and she also has to learn how to be a nanny from scratch because she's never been around children before and knows nothing about kids and the kids and the family that she comes to take care of are very individual and oh, I just 
reading about their struggles and Nina's struggles to understand them and then when they finally reach this kind of understanding of each other and she's rooting for them even though she's not the most maternal person it was lovely to read about somebody who is not massively maternal looking after these kids and kind of negotiating that. The other amazing thing about this memoir is that it is written in a completely epistolary style so all of this book basically is reconstructed from letters that Nina sent to her sister telling her all about this life that she was leading and of course you can imagine that Nina was a lot more honest to her sister than she was to anybody else at the time including in her own diary and so there are some moments in here that are a bit like oh she really went there yep yeah, she said that she really did. If this cover makes you feel nostalgic in any way for the 80s then you need to read this book because I felt like I was walking back in to my childhood. It was so vivid I felt like I was I felt like I was there. Somehow this book manages to go all the way from like the poetry of Seamus Heaney to what the hell is that on your face and what do I do about it and I just I think that's a very special in a narrative. I think it's great so yes this one read it. Okay so Lauren gave me another one which almost stumped me. It was this one. This is 5875 which is kind of a wheat which is leaning on the like greeny side, the olivey side and I immediately went to my fantasy shelves obviously because that is where all of the kind of old map, old world colours come from but I thought no, no, stay away, let's give you guys a recommendation for a different type of book for one that would not normally go with this colour and I discovered a book that I didn't even think of initially because I had the proof of it on my shelves for so so long, the proof of it was absolutely beautiful and I didn't want to give it up but the finished copy of it has foiling on it so it won, we can't keep all the books otherwise eventually the library will collapse through to the first floor and then Harry will be mad at me. So the book that I ended up with was The Animals at Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy and it's quite hard to see on camera but this back colour is almost exactly 5875, like it's, it's almost exactly. I am really impressed with my talents in this video. This book is set in August of 1939 I think when the bombings of London became so much of a concern that they decided they were going to move massive parts of things from museums out into the countryside away from the capital where they were much less likely to get damaged. Enter Hetty. She is tasked with looking after the Natural History Museum's mammal collection and she is sent along with <laughs> these stuffed and beautifully preserved animals to the very strange countryside Lockwood Manor. The manor itself is very cold and unforgiving, not a welcoming place at all and Hetty was initially more worried that the collection was you know going to get damaged and she was going to get blamed for it but now that she's there she's more kind of worried that she's going to become part of the stuffed collection because very weird things are happening at night in Lockwood Manor when she is wandering the halls and there are some very odd characters there that she's not entirely sure that she trusts and it's it's kind of impossible to say anything else about it without giving spoilers but come close and I'm a, I'm a whisper something that I think will appeal to you guys. It's queer, it's queer and it lives on my thriller shelves so you should give it a go. And finally we finished on a colour that I think Josephine was trying to stump me on because it is 802 which is this kind of like psychedelic luminescent green like fluorescent lime green which is not really a colour that is readily represented in my library or my personal colour palette but haha <laughs> jokes on you Josephine because I have exactly the perfect book for it and I am more than happy to talk about it and that is Her Body and Other Parties by Karen Maria Machado. This is as fluorescent lime green as it is possible to be which is annoying to me 
as somebody who loves books and has a very bright sunny library because this spine will feed in five minutes. It's also not my favourite cover of this book if I'm perfectly honest. I really like this version which is the original hardback but it makes sense because one of the stories in this retells the story of the green ribbon which is what this is meant to represent in the green and so, so we'll just go with it okay we'll go with it and it fits the prompt. This is a collection of short horror stories that are feminist and a little bit experimental. If you like speculative fiction, if you like not knowing whether it's a dystopia or where a story is set, then you're gonna love some of the stories in this collection. Those aren't always the stories that work well for me, but I actually, I loved them. I really did. Some of my favourites are, I think it's called Eight Bites, which is a story about really society's obsession with food and how it's given to us and how we accept it because it is a woman who is considering bariatric surgery and is kind of thinking like, is this her only choice in life? And reading about her obsession with food was just, ugh. It, it really does break boundaries. If you want to feel uncomfortable reading a horror collection then this is definitely the one to go for. There's also a story in here about a woman who chooses to reclaim her sexuality after a sexual assault by watching porn and that one, oh, that one really got under my skin in a kind of like little bug that burrows in and then pokes parts of you that you didn't know you were uncomfortable about. Mm. And there's one in here which essentially recreates like The Shining where a female writer goes in to the mountains and goes mad but it's kind of like is she mad or is the entire world mad and she's been the only sane one the whole time. This is one of those books that kind of epitomizes that thing that I feel when I'm like Bleh. but I liked it. I felt like I needed a shower at the end but in a good way. But not all of the stories in here are weird and speculative. Some of them are very much set in our world. One of them in particular takes Law and Order Special Victims Unit episodes and the snippets from them to show how women are always the victim, always in all situations. And so it is a very, very feminist collection. If that's not what you're looking for, skip it. There are many other creepy collections out there. But this one just, mm, it's always going to be on my recommendations list. And it's another one that I'm like, y'all told me I should have read it sooner and uh you you were right okay you were you were right so that's it i feel like i have thoroughly conquered the pantone recommendation challenge i say that like it's a real official thing and not a thing that i just made up to annoy myself for the afternoon but if you have enjoyed it then please feel free to do your own pantone recommendation challenge on your channel i would like to see which colors that you pick to tell us about as always if you have read any of the books that I have talked about here today and you also like them, I would like to hear about that down below in the comments. I would even like to hear about it if you didn't like them because we like opinions here. And if you had any books that would have perfectly fit for the colours of my Pantone swatches then please let me know about those too because I'm always looking for books to put on my wish list because the book buying is a lifestyle guys, it's a lifestyle. And I will speak to you all very soon. Goodbye. I mean I've got less to put away than if I had you know gone digging through the box for the colours but I'm still resentful about it and it's still entirely likely that these will be sitting in this exact pile in a corner of my study. 2022.